Hello, everyone. Welcome to the information session for the 2023 Ornithology Careers Institute. We're, we're really excited to talk a little bit about what this institute is and uh, what it means and hopefully be able to answer uh, in the presentation questions you might have. Uh, but please do feel free to reach out to any of us directly um, if you're viewing this recording later um, and have questions. All right. So, um, the Ornithology Careers Institute is a week-long ornithology career skills training that we hold here at Manomet in Massachusetts. Uh, the goal of the Ornithology Careers Institute is to um, take aspiring ornithologists and give you uh, an intensive week-long exposure to a whole range of ornithology field skills and professional ornithologists that will hopefully give you a boost um, in your career, help you be competitive for paid ornithology field positions, graduate school, et cetera. So that's our big picture goal. And um, can I have the next slide? So what is Manomet? So we all work for the organization Manomet. We are a nonprofit conservation organization uh, that works all across the Western Hemisphere. Um, we have staff in North America, Central America, and South America. All most of us working toward working in some area related to bird conservation. Um, we're really interested in migratory pathways of birds and in working on conservation priorities all along the migratory paths of the birds that we're focused on. Um, I think if we can go to the next slide. Um, the Ornithology Careers Institute is going to be led by two really amazing. Uh, Manomet bird banders and field biologists, uh, Salvador Morales and Evan Dalton. And at this point, I'm just going to turn it over to them uh, to introduce themselves. Oh, and I should introduce myself. My name is Molly Jacobs. I'm Manomet's vice president for environmental education and outreach. Um, so if you do apply, you may be corresponding with me via email, um, but I'm going to turn it over to the, to the field scientists now. So why don't you um, Go ahead, uh, Salva, and give a little introduction to yourself uh, about your birding background and, and your hopes for this institute. Hello, everyone. Um, well, my name is Salvadora Morales. I work in the flyways program in Manomet. I am based in Nicaragua, and I have been banded bird in the last 20 years here in Nicaragua, working with migratory birds and resident species in the, in, in the neotropics. So it is uh, a really uh, a good experience. Uh, right now, I just want to share a little bit about where I am right now. Um, this is, I don't know if you can see it, this. Well, we are right now in the cloud forest. This is one of the most important routes of mi migrations when they are coming or when the birds are coming and going to south. Um, and we are trying all the time to connect conservation actions to the conservations, uh, the habitat conservations and connecting people with birds. So it is a great opportunity to be here and share part of the experience that we are uh, doing and what we are doing here in the Neotropics. So um, it will be great to have all the candidates and the people enroll in this program. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Alva. Uh, my name is Evan Dalton. I'm the uh, director of Manomet Observatory here, which includes the uh, migratory uh, songbird banding lab. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited uh, to to have another Ornithology Careers Institute and and to to meet all the different people who come in and um, and uh, really to to help hopefully jumpstart some careers. I know a lot of people at Manomet have had their careers jumpstarted. So um, hopefully we can con continue that pattern moving forward. Um, so I work here at Manomet Observatory. Uh, it's basically this little dot uh, on the map here. Uh, and it just sort of sticks out into uh, Massachusetts Bay here. Um, and since 1969, we've been monitoring birds on site. We do that through capturing migratory birds with mist nets and banding those birds to see where they go. Uh, we also manage the habitat here for stopover uh, habitat, which learn more about. 
Um, and uh, we do a lot of other things. We do sea watches, which uh, we can count birds as they fly by when they're migrating. Um, and then we just do regular bird surveys here as well, which is super cool. The property itself is really beautiful. It's uh, about 40 acres. Uh, this right-hand portion here uh, is the wooded area where we have most of our mist nets. We have 50 mist nets, which look like a giant hair net that we use to capture birds. You can see they're right along the uh, coastline here too. So we catch birds right as they're migrating through every spring and fall. Uh, this year's OCI will take place during the latter portion of the spring migration season. So most of the birds that we catch moving through will either be sticking around or moving a little further north or west. Uh, we also have a portion of our property that is comprised of old cranberry bogs, which we're restoring into natural wetlands again, uh, as well as um, some grassland areas and some great places for bird watching in general. Uh, I'm mostly concerned with what happens here at the banding lab, and this is our banding lab here. This is a group from our, uh, I guess, from last year, uh, from uh, banding last year. Uh, this is uh, what happens inside the banding lab, which is people are holding birds. That's very strange and very unnatural, but they're actually uh, holding birds that have tiny little metal bands that we placed on them. Um, so any birds that we capture in our nets that are moving through, we bring into the banding lab. Uh, we take some measurements, put a little metal band on them, and let them go. That's a great learning opportunity, uh, not just for the scientific community as a whole, uh, but also for the people participating. So uh, we learn all kinds of things, like what younger birds look like versus older birds. Um, we can learn to identify birds better. And um, throughout the course of the Ornithology Careers Institute, we'll get into the schedule a little bit later, um, but all the participants will get a, a chance uh, to really have some hands-on uh, learning, to get to um, practice handling birds if you hadn't had a chance with that. Um, and if you're experienced with handling birds, uh, then we can dive a bit more into um, some of the more uh, in-depth techniques uh, along with that. Um, so just a sampling of some of the birds that we might catch. We're located in the northeastern United States, so we catch birds that either stick around. This white-breasted nuthatch on the left here is a, uh, a relatively stays relatively put, and is what we would consider a resident species. Um, and on the right, we have a young gray catbird. Catbirds are our most common species in the nets at Manomet. Um, they probably comprise about 50 to 60 percent of the birds we've ever caught over the 50 plus years. Um, it's a lot of catbirds. Um, we also catch really long distance migrants uh, like wood thrushes um, and sort of mid distance migrants like yellow warblers. So these are both species that either will breed nearby or on the property. Um, some of our really long distance migrants come to us and show signs of uh, their really long journeys. Uh, so this is a rose breasted grosbeak here on the left and a Canada warbler. And uh, both of these birds are showing uh, some extreme signs of wear on their feathers. Um, and so what we would call, we would call these birds uh, FCF birds or SY birds. And if you're curious about what that means, maybe OCI is right for you. Uh, but we can see that these are older feathers on this bird that have not yet been replaced. Um, same thing with this Canada warbler. It's got a block of sort of brownish gray feathers as opposed to blue gray feathers up here. Um, so both of these birds are birds that we're able to actually age in the hand, which is super cool, using uh, something that we call molt limits. These are two eastern towhees. Um, one of these is an older bird, and another one is a younger bird in the spring. So this is a bird that's showing some, some uh, different feather generations on its wing. Um, so this is one of the techniques we'll certainly talk about quite a bit, uh, since we focus a lot on bird feathers here at the observatory. Um, we definitely don't, will not shortchange you on that over the course of, of this week. Um, so the week itself uh, will take place from May 30th through June 6th, um, and it's uh, free for anyone who's accepted into the program, uh, and all travel, room, and board are included as well, um, which is awesome. Here we've got some pictures of people birding, which will definitely have ample opportunities to do that right along the coast so you can see all kinds of cool stuff. Um, on site we've got uh, nesting boxes that are used by tree swallows and bluebirds. Uh, last year, here's a picture from last year, 
um, where some of the participants actually got to help out with uh, banding a brood of young tree swallows, which are pretty adorable. Um, and this is one of them right here. Um, so the week will look like this. Apologies for all of the text. You don't have to necessarily read or devote all of this to, to memory or whatnot. Um, but basically to give a, a general impression of, of what your week would look like as a participant as you travel in on the Monday. Um, and then our mornings will be full of mostly work in the banding lab, weather permitting. Um, and uh, the banders get up right before dawn. So in June, that's extremely early in the morning. Um, but we'll start a little bit later than that, but still want to capitalize on as much experience as we can get in the banding lab. Um, we'll work on our bird handling skills. We'll do tons of observations of banding. And then, like I said, uh, for those with more experience, uh, we'll dive even deeper into that. Um, and uh, afternoons will be filled with things like uh, field surveys. Uh, we might do some nestling banding. Uh, there's vegetation surveys. We've got some radio telemetry gear, too. Um, so lots of different field skills that we get to focus on. Uh, on the weekend, we're going to try to do some field trips. We did some field trips last time and, and had a great time with that. So we live in a really interesting area. Where we're right along the coast, but we've got a, a globally unique uh, uh, habitat type called the, the southeastern Massachusetts Pine Barrens. Uh, so we love to get people out there and, and share uh, this really unique habitat with, with everybody. Um, so we'll we'll do that, and then we'll also focus on a lot of the natural history and the human history um, of the of the area as well. Um, we'll do a, a little, I guess, one more day of bird banding of, after the weekend, um, and then people will head on out. Um, but uh, it's really jam packed, uh, plenty of time for uh, meeting each other and getting to know each other, but also getting to know you'll be uh, living on site with our seasonal banding crew as well. And they're an amazing resource and um, super knowledgeable in and of themselves. Um, but you also get a chance to hear from and meet um, a whole bunch of Manomet scientists that you saw that uh, map that Molly showed at the beginning, all those different dots. So you get to meet some of those dots, which will be great. Um, and uh, yeah, if you're interested in participating, uh, you can check out manomet.org slash OCI and fill out an online application. Um, it's pretty easy. It's just a Google form. Um, and if you have any questions, you can contact us uh, through that form. I believe there's actually our email addresses are in that. So you can just reach out to us that way. Did I miss anything? Probably. Yeah, I'll add that um, this is a program that's opened uh, uh, open to anyone regardless of, for example, citizenship status. Um, we did, for example, last year have particip a participant from Puerto Rico. And so uh, please don't feel like you need to live close to Manomet in order to participate. Um, as I said, we do have funding to, um, to cover travel and uh, we're excited to get a really diverse um, group of participants uh, at the Institute. Um, I should also add, because I don't think I mentioned it before, that um, this is specifically for uh, we are specifically targeting early college students and early career folks who want to get into ornithology, who identify as BIPOC or Latinx, or from a group that's historically been excluded from the ornithology world. And so we're really excited to be able to, to extend that opportunity to those students. Um, yeah, feel free to get in touch with us if you have any questions, and we're really um, excited to, uh, to hear from you. Yeah, look forward to maybe meeting some of you. <laughs>